Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Georgia Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started with the presentations. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And if it's a question for a specific institution, make sure you include the school's name in your question so they know it's for them. Your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this one. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week. Again, the same website where you registered for this one. We are in session C3 of this virtual college fair. And where I have the red pointer going in a circle is the order of which we will hear the presentations tonight. So I've gotten all the administrative stuff out of the way. So now I will get out of the way and turn it over to our first presentation from Georgia Southwestern State University. Hey folks, uh, hope everybody's doing well. Um, my name is Luke Ellis. I am being joined by Tyler, with Tyler Pennington. Uh, he is gonna help me answer all those questions that you may have. Um, I do want to mention after this six by six session, we will uh, be hosting a separate virtual chat beginning after 745. Um, so if we don't get to all those questions, we can make sure that we get that taken care of. And you can visit us at gsw.edu forward slash chat. We're going to discuss a few different topics today. Uh, we're going to talk about our location, our student body, who our students are, um, our programs of study. Uh, the different uh, campus activities that we have going on, residence life and housing, uh, our cost and tuition, and then of course options and ways that you can come down and visit GSW. So we'll go ahead and get started with our location. We are located in Americus, Georgia. Uh, most of our students are probably about two and a half to three hours away from campus. So it's that nice sweet spot. We are close enough to where uh, you can go home and go back and forth on the weekends if you need to, but also far enough away where you can gain your independence and be your own person and, uh, and develop as an individual and spread those wings and fly. When we look at our student body, uh, we have a total enrollment of about 3,000 students. Uh, when you remove the graduate students, we're about 2,500 students strong with a 16 to one student faculty ratio. Uh, the nice thing about GSW is that our faculty members are, are dedicated to teaching and they're all teaching professionals. So that helps keeps our class sizes smaller. Uh, so we have an average class size of about 20, an average core class size of about 25 with a 67 to 33% male to female ratio. Um, and then of course, our average uh, freshman class size is about 400. Uh, so it really does help uh, depict the fact that we are that perfect size institution. We're small enough to where you can really engage with your faculty members and your friends in class and out, off campus. Uh, but also we're large enough to where, um, you know, you'll know a lot of people, but you won't know everybody. So you do have that anonymity and there's a lot of opportunities in that as well. When we look at our student body and who our students are and where they're coming from, about 90% of our students are coming from the state of Georgia. Uh, when we break that down further, about 20% of our students um, are coming from private high schools, about a quarter of our enrollment uh, is coming from uh, the metro area of Atlanta and also North Georgia. Um, and then we have a very strong academic profile. Uh, so when you look at our average SAT score, it's around a 1050. Our average GPA is around a 3.23. And then about 70% uh, of our freshman students are eligible and are receiving the HOPE scholarship, which is really helpful. Um, this right here is a shot of our degree programs that we offer. We offer 44 different uh, programs of study. Our largest programs, of course, are nursing, education, business, and the pre-professional sciences. But we also have some really cool programs as well. Um, one to spotlight is our glass blowing program. Uh, we are one of the few colleges in the Southeast to offer such a program. And they produce some really, really cool works of art and some uh, and impressive pieces of glass as well. Um, and of course, there's a lot of different ways to get involved at GSW, uh, a lot of different programs and a lot of different clubs and activities. In total, we have over 60 different clubs and organizations, and they range from anything from Greek life, uh, social opportunities, philanthropic opportunities, um, uh, 
of course, leisure-based, hobby-based, and major-based clubs and activities. Uh, and then, of course, our students are, they have a lot of involvement with intramural sports and recreational sports. And we are uh, in the Peach Belt Conference, uh, and we are a Division II school. We always like to make sure that we're having a lot of fun stuff for our students as well. And our set team is uh, in charge of that, making sure that we're having a lot of fun on campus also. Uh, we have several housing facilities. We're going to highlight Oaks uh, just because that is our freshman, uh, th freshman facility. As you can see from the depiction, we have two options, a shared room and a private room. Uh, both rooms have beds that can be bunked or lofted for additional space, a semi-private bathroom, sinks located in the bedroom for convenience, and fully furnished with a twin bed, a desk, a desk chair, and a dresser. The left side is the shared room. The right side is the private room. Uh, the primary difference difference is the private rooms, uh, you have a lockable door, an additional sink, and the prices are a little bit different as well. The pricing is a little bit more. Uh, this right here is just a screenshot of our tuition fee costs addition, with the inclusion of housing and meal plan costs. Uh, depending on what dormitory you're in and also uh, what meal plan you're using, you can pretty much anticipate spending anywhere from $7,500 to $8,100 per semester. And this, of course, is before we include any financial aid, uh, students who receive the HOPE scholarship uh, will have a deduction of $2,355. Students who receive the Promise, uh, the, the, uh, the Zell Miller scholarship will receive $2,540. And then uh, we offer the Promise scholarship, which is open to all students this academic year. Uh, it is based off of a 3.5 GPA, based off of the required high school curriculum courses. Students that meet that qualification get a guaranteed $1,000. And then of course, there's other opportunities that we have as well uh, through the Pope Fellowship Scholarship and the President Carter Leadership Program as well. Um, so we would love for you guys to come by and visit C Southwestern for yourself, meet Surge. Uh, two ways of doing that is through uh, campus tours Monday through Friday at two o'clock and 10 o'clock. And then of course, preview days on Saturday. And you can visit, schedule your visit at gsw.edu forward slash visit. And we would love to continue this conversation afterwards, uh, gsw.edu forward slash chat. Thanks guys. Thank you very much. And want to remind everyone to use the Q&A button to ask questions of our presenters at any time. Just make sure if it's for a specific school that you name the school in your question. Next up, we will hear from Piedmont College. Good evening, everyone. I hope you are doing well. Hold on one second. I'm having a difficulty here with my computer. Here we go. Okay. So Piedmont College, we are located in um, Northeast Georgia. Hold on, there we go. So we are located in Demarest, Georgia. We are in the mountains of Northeast Georgia, the foothills of the Appalachians. We are a private liberal arts college. We have about 1200 undergraduate students on our campus. We have four schools that are included at Piedmont College, the R.H. Daniel School of Nursing and Health Sciences, one of the top five nursing programs in Okay, not sure what happened there. Are you still there? I'm back. My internet okay. cut out. So. All right. Sorry about that. Can you still see my screen? Nope. No, oh. you'll need to reshare it. I'm resharing. Here we go. Okay. Mountains of Northeast Georgia. So, and then, so yes, our four schools, RH Daniel School of Nursing and Health Sciences, the Walker School of Business, School of Education, and our School of Arts and Sciences. We have 49 clubs and organizations at Piedmont, including Greek Life. We have 21 NCAA Division III athletic teams, as well as intramurals. And our student faculty ratio 11 to one, your professors will know exactly who you are and you will be able to contact them and have a relationship with them that will benefit you. Um, and not just in the classroom, but as you're looking for jobs and networking after um, college. So average class size 12 to 13. Freshman classes do run about 24 students, but still small enough to have that personal feel. And like I previously mentioned, about 1,200 students in our undergraduate population. Super exciting news, Piedmont University. We are going to become Piedmont University in April 2021. Um, 
in preparation for our 125th birthday. So we are looking forward to that. We are prepping, we are getting ready. Those previous schools I mentioned will become colleges. Our new logo is coming and we, as our president likes to say, have construction dirt in the air at all times. We are getting ready to finish our newly renovated home for our school of education. Last year, we opened our brand new music conservatory. We are breaking ground in the next month on a new freshman residence hall. Um, athletic facilities in, um, are coming as well as a new parking lot. Doesn't sound excited, but very needed. So that is something that we are just excited and ready to go. Residence life, we have a place for every freshman on campus to live. There's guaranteed housing for freshmen. Suite style and apartment style housing options for upperclassmen as well. Um, every room does come with the standard tw two twin size beds. For freshmen, you do have a roommate, but every room comes with the um, twin size beds, a full size refrigerator, microwave, closet space, desk area. Um, we're always doing things on campus, more activities on campus than days in the school year. And they're taking students off campus when possible. Obviously, things are a little different this year. But we have sporting events, concerts, theater performance. We've had Grammy Award winning artists on campus, museum receptions, everything. There's something for everyone on campus. Um, so you can see these are some of our um, these are some of our events on campus. Um, theater performances, you see the nursing students in the bottom center picture, that's something called disaster drill that's put on by multiple departments on campus that is a highlight of Piedmont College. Admissions requirements, our application is online or you can use the Common App. There is no application fee associated with either of those applications. We look for at least a 3.0 unweighted GPA. Our freshman average last year for incoming students was a 3.45. We look for at least a 20 on the ACT and a thousand on the SAT. So you can see those averages there. Merit-based scholarships, private school merit-based scholarships are where most of your financial aid awards will come and they are a combination of scores and GPA. Now you can see like many schools, we have gone test optional for fall 2021, but having test scores at this moment will increase your scholarship offer most likely. So if you have them, we would like to see them. Financial aid, 97% of our students receive some type of institutional aid, and typically it's 100% of the incoming freshman class are receiving merit-based scholarships. Um, we do accept other need-based aid in financial aid. I recommend um, checking out our website for our net price calculator. It might be surprising how affordable a private education can be. We are consistently voted one of the best value schools in the state of Georgia. Um, there is not any athletic scholarships being Division Three athletics, but there are many other scholarships that you can apply for for Piedmont College, including outside scholarships. We are always happy um, when our students are awarded those. Visits. We want to see you on campus. We offer a very unique visit experience. You will be able to sit down, you and your family, who you whoever you choose to bring with you, sit down with an admissions advisor one-on-one. -on -one. We'll talk for 30 minutes about the process of applying to Piedmont and what Piedmont's all about and if it's the right school for you. You will get to meet with a professor in your area of interest if one is available and 95% of the time that happens. You get 30 minutes with a professor. It's a pretty sweet deal. Um, you also will get a financial aid session and then a campus tour. So we encourage you to do that. We really would like to see you on campus. We also have a virtual live preview day coming up. You can sign up for that on our website, piedmont.edu. Here is our contact information. Follow us on Instagram. You're gonna see some great um, things and ability to ask questions of our students there. But that's my email information as well. Please contact us. And we look forward to seeing you on campus at Piedmont. Thank you very much. And I want to remind everyone, once again, if you have any questions, use the Q&A button to ask them and make sure you name the school if it's a question for a specific university or college. We will continue now. I'll share the, the schedule coming up. Again, we are in section C3. We just heard from Piedmont College. Up next, Queens University of Charlotte. Good evening, everybody. Let me just get my presentation pulled up here. 
All right, so I hope everyone can see this. Um, if not, let me know in that chat box. Um, but it's so great to have you guys all here today. I'm gonna go over a couple things kind of regarding queens. Um, first, kind of go over, you know, basics of queens and what our class sizes and things like that look like. I'm gonna dive a little into our study abroad and internship programs, because they are very important at Queens. A little bit of residential life and then kind of go into uh, some application stuff as well. So again, thanks for joining me today. I'm super excited to be here. I think it's always so fun to talk about, you know, Queens and Charlotte and the area because Queens is located right uptown Charlotte and Charlotte is growing like crazy, right? We had something like 20 plus restaurants open alone in December um, in Charlotte. So there's a lot of hustle and bustle. There's a lot going on in the city. Um, our total undergraduate population is about 1700. So the total student body, including master's students comes to about 2,500 students. Uh, we are a residential campus, so we require three years of residency. So we have about 68% of our students living right on campus. We always find this is just really great, you know, especially being in that Charlotte area um, and being so close to everything that living on campus really just puts you in a, in a good position to, you know, intern at different places and really not have to drive anywhere that's too far away as well. So it's nice to have, you know, those networking tools and everything right in your backyard. Um, the next thing I want to talk a little bit about, which is one of my favorite parts about Queens, our average class size is 17 students. So we completely cap out at 20 students per class. You will never, even in those general education program classes, have more than that. Once you dive a little bit deeper into your major, you may have, you know, eight or nine students in your class at a time. So a way to really get close with your professors and start that networking, and as well as your peers. Um, it is definitely more of a hands-on experience. So at Queens, you know, you will be going out into the community and really seeing things come full circle from the academic side into really the real world and what's happening in that area. I would say our most popular majors are gonna be business, nursing and education. We do have 42 majors and 64 minors as well. Um, so I'm gonna chat a little bit about our study abroad program. Um, so there are five different types of trips that you can take. One of the trips is called our JBIP program, John Belk International. It is a completely funded program. So coming to Queens, you are given a study abroad experience. You can see on that screen in front of you that we have a top 20 nationally ranked program. And I think that has a lot to do with the abroad experience. Essentially what it is, is a semester in the classroom and you take everything you learned into fruition abroad for only about a week or two. So it is really a great way to, you know, kind of get that academic experience and take it into um, a different type of community. Um, with internships, we do require internships for every major besides nursing. Uh, nursing, you'll have your clinical hours, but we actually do different partnerships with companies in Charlotte, which I think really helps our students get engaged and really get into that networking tool as well. So I think that has a big deal to do with that 97% of graduates in 2018 employed in graduate school, and 94% of those found a job within nine months of graduation. That number is outstanding to me, right? It really is, you know, students in their junior year doing an internship in college. Typically, those junior year internships turn into full time positions by the time you are out of school. So you go your entire senior year knowing that there is an internship or a, an actual job waiting for you on the other side of graduation. So it's really nice for seniors to really know that, you know, there is something after college and we are doing this for a reason, right? Uh, we do partner with some of the bigger Fortune 500 companies in Charlotte, Bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Atrium, Carolina Healthcare, the Hornets, you name it, we really are involved really full circle with the Charlotte region as well. Um, so next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about campus life. So we are a division two school, so we do give athletic aid. Um, and we have quite a few clubs on campus as well. I wouldn't call our campus what you would say a suitcase campus. Students are on campus and really, really, you know, gaining that opportunity with other students and doing different clubs and organizations and really having that full yes and experience where you don't have to sacrifice one thing that you are doing to have another thing. You can be an athlete and study abroad and do an internship and be in a nursing major and all of those other things. Um, so just some ways to apply, you know, just think of um, those November 1st and December 1st deadlines are really our heaviest deadlines. 
uh, just make sure if you guys want, you can you know go ahead and screenshot the screen. Um, there's quite a few things kind of going on here, but we do look at each student holistically. So we are looking at a merit-based scholarship. I'd say maybe 99% of our students receive a merit-based scholarship. With us being a private school, all scholarships are stackable, merit, need, outside scholarships, all of those. Um, so there really are, you know, quite a few different ways to kind of get involved in the scholarship area and just making sure that those are all stackable as well. Um, we are a test optional school. We went test optional actually last year. So we kind of had that full year of being test optional and reading applications. And this year we've kind of pivoted more towards an interview process as well. So you're going to have your whole um, application process of the essay, extracurricular activities, SAT or ACT scores, um, your GPA and course rigor, as well as an interview. And the interview will get, will get to know you guys a little bit better. So lots of different stuff going on. Please connect with us. We have daily tours going on, both virtual and in-person. So we're excited to meet you guys. Brittany, thank you. And a reminder, as I do after every presentation, to make sure that if you have a question for any of our panelists, make sure you use the Q&A button and name the specific institution if it is aimed at one of them. Up next, we will hear from Regent University. Wonderful. Well, um, good evening, everyone. My name is Caitlin Urban from Regent University, and I'm here with you this evening to talk a little bit about what your future might look like at Regent. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, at Regent, we have over 4,400 undergraduate students and about 1,300 of those students study on campus. Our students come from all 50 states, 90 countries, and 40 different denominations. And as a student, you can choose to study online, live on campus, or commute from the local area. Um, and here you can see our average test scores and GPA. Uh, however, it is important to note that here at Regent, we take a holistic approach to admissions. So we consider each student as an individual. Uh, we look at your extracurriculars, the difficulty level of the classes you're taking in high school, and at other information that you submit along with your application. Um, I also want to mention that we are test optional, although we encourage you to submit your test scores if you have them. Regent has a rich history uh, for more than 40 years as an award-winning accredited liberal arts university. For eight years in a row, we have been recognized by US News and World Report for offering the best online bachelor's program in Virginia. Uh, this has been a fantastic benefit for our students now more than ever in this virtual world, and also for students who are looking for more flexibility in their education. We have curated a comprehensive curriculum for which we are one of only 22 universities in the country to receive an A rating. And 90% of our full-time faculty hold the highest degree in their discipline, usually a PhD, and many of them work actively in that field. Our student to faculty ratio is 19 to one, and our average class size is 17 students. So rest assured that here at Regent, you will not be treated like a number or get lost in a giant lecture hall. Um, this small classroom dynamic allows you to build those lasting relationships with your peers and also receive more personalized instruction from your professors. And finally, I'd like to note that we awarded over $24 million in institutional scholarships and financial aid last year. We realize that figuring out the finances is a huge factor in which school you choose. And at Regent, we are committed to making sure that our education is affordable. Uh, so we rank in the top 5% of most affordable private Christian colleges and universities. Uh, so don't let that sticker price shock you. Um, if you choose Regent, we can help you fund your education in many different ways, including different types of scholarships. Uh, and we also have a net price calculator available on our website that can help you determine your individual costs uh, based on your variables. So I'd encourage you to check out that resource as well. We are a liberal arts university and we offer over 135 different programs that range from the arts all the way to STEM. And we offer different levels uh, as well, everything from professional certificates to associate's degrees, to bachelor's to PhDs uh, and everything in between. 
So that breadth and depth of our resources are going to be available to you as a student, regardless of which program you choose. And here at Regent, we want to surround you with every resource you need to earn a quality education and to have a great experience. Um, all of our services from our academic support center to our Center for Student Happiness are available to you, whether you live on campus or you commute or you study online. We are committed to helping make this a successful venture for you, and we want to help you every single step of the way. We understand that your college experience involves every aspect of life, and so at Regent, we offer multiple opportunities for you outside of the classroom as well. We have over 55 different student organizations on campus, including Surf Club, Moot Court, and our Student Activities Board, among others. We also offer nine collegiate sports, as well as many club and intramural sports. Um, and we have a state-of-the-art performing arts center where students can either watch or participate in different productions throughout the year. And if you are interested in a military career, we offer several ROTC programs and scholarships as well. So if you schedule a tour to visit Regent, and we are hosting one-on-one uh, -on -one tours right now, uh, you will be struck by the amazing natural beauty, the brick walkways, the Georgian style architecture on our campus. We are located in coastal Virginia Beach, only a short drive from the boardwalk. And Virginia as a whole boasts uh, 38 state parks, 21 national parks. So those are great places to explore over the weekends. And Virginia is also home to several historic sites, including the largest tourist attraction in the area nearby historic Williamsburg. Our students can also take advantage of nearby art museums and cultural events. And plus, we are only a few hours away from places like the Outer Banks and Washington, DC. So what are your next steps if you're interested in applying? Well, there's two different ways you can apply to Regent. You can apply online on our website. Uh, our application is available there. It's a very streamlined, easy process. Or you can call one of our admissions counselors and they can walk you through the process step by step. Um, often, if you call them, they will be able to waive the $50 application fee. And I do want to mention also that um, we have start dates every eight weeks. Um, so there's you are, can apply any time. And we would absolutely love to uh, walk you through that process and help you find the program uh, that fits you best. So with that, I'll pass it on to the next presenter. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Caitlin, thank you very much. And I'll remind everyone, use the Q&A button for any questions you have for any of our presenters. Up next, we'll hear from the University of Maryland. Kenya, you're still muted. This never fails. I do three of these a day and I somehow always end up on mute. But thank you all um, so much for attending. My name is Kenya Taylor and I'm with the University of Maryland. And so I'll be going over with you all some um, key points about the university and spending some time on our admissions process and our application. So let's just jump right in. So the University of Maryland is a top tier public research institution. We have been given the distinction of being number 19 among public universities and number 15 for the most innovative schools by the US News and World Reports. We are a large university. We have about 30,000 undergraduate students. We get students from all 50 states, including the beautiful state of Georgia and over a hundred different countries. We have a very active, vibrant and diverse student population. About 43% of our undergraduate students identify as being a student of color. So we have a lot of cultural events and students get to be a part of that. We have over 800 student organizations, and these organizations will range from professional, academic, social, religious, multicultural, um, intramural sports, sororities, and fraternities. And we are Division I in athletics, and we are a part of the Big Ten Conference. 
The University of Maryland is located in College Park, Maryland, which can be described as a college town, definitely um, a more suburban setting, but we are just 10 miles outside of the nation's capital, Washington, DC, and we are the only research institution within the DC Beltway. And we're about 20 miles outside of Annapolis, which is the state capital of Maryland. And we are conveniently located around um, three international airports. So students have easy access to get to and from um, the College Park, Maryland area. And being right outside of Washington, D.C. does open up so many opportunities for our students. A lot of our students will decide to complete internships um, at the Capitol, work for one of the nation's think tank agencies or the federal agencies, and really get to experience a lot of different cultures, not only from being on campus, but also in Washington, D.C. And this could be from touring the Smithsonian Museums. Um, once everything is open again, the Cherry Blossom Festival, and of course, um, enjoying some of the professional sports teams that we have right here in Washington, DC. And the campus itself is a very quick train ride to, into Washington, DC. The DC Metro has a stop in College Park, and it's about a five minute shuttle ride to get to the train station, or on a beautiful day like we had today, a lot of our students will actually walk to the train station and you can be right in the downtown area with the heart of DC in about 10 to 15 minutes. We offer over 90 academic degree programs within our 12 schools and colleges. And we also have um, our College of Letters and Sciences who advise students that are undecided or undeclared but our students have so many options to, um, they can have a major and a minor, they can double major um, or even triple major. Some of our more popular programs are our computer science program, um, majors within engineering, biological sciences, psychology, government and politics, and our Smith School of Business. Now we do have a handful of majors that we consider to be limited enrollment programs. And just like the name is, sounds, those programs, we do have to limit the number of students that we admit into those programs in order to maintain the quality of the program. So students who are applying to a limited enrollment program will have the options to put down a secondary major um, because these majors are a little bit more competitive. And the learning at the University of Maryland goes beyond the classroom. Um, our students are not only just learning, but they actually get opportunities to put some of their knowledge into action and actually get out there and do the work. As mentioned before, we are a research institution. And so we do have a very strong undergraduate research program and our students um, get the opportunities to work alongside of their professors to conduct research. And research isn't just limited to our science majors. We have a lot of collaborative research and we offer research opportunities across several different disciplines. Um, we have a lot of internship opportunities for our students. And um, another benefit of being so close to Washington, D.C. is that you don't have to wait until the summer in order to do an internship. You can go to class in the morning, hop on the train, be in Washington, D.C. for your internship you know, in the afternoon or vice versa. So that does open up a lot of opportunities for our students. And we do have a, a pretty large number of students that participate in our education abroad program. And as you can imagine right now that is on hold, but we do offer over 400 options where students can travel abroad. And those programs can be specific to your major or they can be cultural or social based as well. We are a do good campus, so our students are very involved in service learning. They not only give back to the, you know, um, the university community, but they do a lot of um, nationwide and actually a lot of service learning um, can be coupled with the education abroad programs as well. And we do have living learning communities within our um, 
within our residence halls as well. And then um, just to know about our application process, we do a holistic review for admissions um, based off 26 factors. And we are test optional this year for scholarships, admissions, and for our living learning communities. And our application, our priority application deadline is November 1st. And we admit over 90% of our students by the November 1st deadline. So that's just an important date to keep in mind. And here is, I think I'm going backwards in the PowerPoint, uh, my contact information. So if you all have any additional questions, please feel free to send me an email. And I believe my time is up, so I will pass it back over. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kenya. I appreciate it. And I'll leave the screen up for a few seconds here. I remind everyone, any questions you have, go ahead and put those in the Q&A box. We have a few that uh, have taken advantage of that. And anyone who wants to do that, Go ahead and do it and make sure that if it's specific to one school that you name the school in your question. We have reached the final school to present this evening in this session and that is Xavier University of Louisiana. All right, good evening, everybody. This is Brian Cooper with Xavier University of Louisiana. I um, hope that you all are doing great this evening. Um, and so just to hop right into it, um, Xavier University is located within the heart of New Orleans, Louisiana, um, a very unique city. Um, hopefully you've had the chance to visit. If not, hopefully you can soon. Um, and so Xavier has definitely been a part of that, of the New Orleans community um, for a long time. And we've even affected it historically to an extent as well. Um, and so if you're looking to come in, definitely um, eat to live or rather live to eat I'll say as we say down here you'll definitely have um, your freshman 15 cut out for you um, and if not your freshman 15 your sophomore 30. And so um, just jumping right on into it by the numbers um, Xavier has almost um, we're literally 10 away 10 students away from um, 33 I'm sorry 3400 students that are currently enrolled. Um, and we have a 15 to one student to teacher ratio. Um, and then 71.6% of our students recognize themselves as African-American. And that's worth mentioning primarily because Xavier is an HBCU and we have been since our conception or inception. And so then um, we have a 19%, excuse me, cohort of students that identify themselves as Catholic. And that is because Xavier was founded by a nun within the Catholic church. And so her name is St. Catherine Drexel, and we definitely owe um, a lot of what we are and who we are to her. And so just to give you a couple of other tidbits about Xavier, um, we were founded back in 1925 um, by our founder, St. Catherine Drexel. And our mission statement says that we strive to promote a more just and humane society. And the way that we do that is by equipping students which is much, with as much information as we can, both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. And so that will include you, of course, having a set curriculum of classes to take with an academic advisor there to guide you throughout your time here at Xavier, but also um, non-academic offices throughout the campus that are literally in existence primarily to help you with your professional life. And so whether that be you getting ready for a career once you get done with Xavier or you getting ready for graduate school or professional school, we have folks that are here at Xavier on campus um, who are literally, whose job is literally to help you in a professional way. And so that may mean helping you with your resume and holding mock interviews with you before actually starting at um, a new job, or that may mean being counseled um, and mentored on applying to medical school. Um, and so it just depends on what you may have an interest in um, and what your career might be in the future or rather what you would want it to be. So getting into our residence halls on campus, currently Xavier has four residence halls um, that we have students that reside within them. And currently only freshmen reside on our campus um, with the, within the residence halls that you see because each and every one of our students currently has their own room. Um, but that is because of COVID-19 um, and actually freshmen reside in every one of these residence halls and upperclassmen currently reside within spaces that are reserved off campus for them. Um, but it is not mandatory for students to reside on campus. It is totally up to you. If you would like to reside on campus, that is an option. And so for that, um, 
of course, you will not have to pay the cost between 9,000 and 11,000 per year in order to reside on campus, depending on what residence hall you would reside within. And so um, if you choose to stay off campus, that's totally fine. Um, and also students are allowed to have cars on campus too. Um, and while I'm mentioning it, um, as some of the perks about Xavier, um, along with not having to stay on campus and allowing you to have your car on campus, our application is totally free. And I'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. And also we have no out-of-state fees. And so it's definitely a win-win-win um, situation um, for students that come through to Xavier. Also, um, pre-COVID, we did have what's um, co comically known as two spring breaks um, because the city of New Orleans celebrates just about every holiday there is to know. Um, Xavier has a spring break for our Mardi Gras holiday, as well as one for our Easter holiday pre-COVID. And so I'm eager to see what that will look like for the spring semester. As you may know, some institutions have changed up how their academic calendar will be for the spring semester and even for this current semester as well. So we'll see if our students have two spring breaks once the spring semester gets closer and closer. But the residence halls you see are the residence halls that are available um, for students to reside on campus. And um, freshmen do have, pardon me, freshmen do have um, the guarantee of being able to reside on campus as long as you um, reserve your room ahead of time and by the deadline, which is usually May 1st. All right. And so in regards to paying for Xavier, um, tuition is roughly around $37,000 um, to $38,000 for the entire academic year, including um, room and board costs as well. But in order to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to help cover some of that cost, we do offer scholarships. And so our partial scholarships range between $4,000 to $18,000 a year for first time freshmen. And that is dependent upon the documents that you send in to us for your application. And so there is no need for an additional application in order to apply for scholarships. And so as long as you submit the application itself, your um, test scores, if you have any, you also can apply without test scores. Your official high school transcript, also a letter of recommendation, an essay and a resume, those are the preferred items that you have to send in in order to apply. Also, um, our top tier scholarships include the Board of Trustees and Presidential, um, excuse me, which as you can see, cover a nice amount of costs here at Xavier. Lastly, of course, like I just mentioned, um, all of the documents required for you to officially apply to Xavier are listed here. And we hope that we see your application soon for all seniors and follow us on social media at Zula Admissions. And thank you for joining me this evening. Ryan, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I want to thank everyone for, who presented tonight and uh, gave all that great information. And I want to thank everyone for attending the session and joining us this evening. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. If there are others, sign up for those where you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as all of the other session recordings, at, again, at the same website where you signed up for this session. I want to thank you once again for attending tonight, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Mr. Russ.